My name is Rob Intrican. I am a life member of the IEEE Ultrasonics, Ferroelectrics, and Frequency Control Society. And in 2022, I retired from Philips after almost 44 years as a biomedical engineer working in the field of diagnostic medical ultrasound imaging. The purpose of this talk is to give you a brief history of Philips Ultrasound and explain why we're located here in the Seattle area as opposed to New York or Boston or Silicon Valley or somewhere else. It all started over 60 years ago with the University of Washington, where research on pulse Doppler ultrasound had been ongoing since the 1960s. Bob Rushmer was the head of the Center for Bioengineering. He was a pediatrician and a physiologist who wanted to measure cardiovascular function and blood flow non-invasively. Rushmer recruited Don Baker and a few other talented engineering students to use their knowledge of radar and sonar gained from prior military service in the Korean War. Together, they developed the first phase-coherent pulse wave Doppler ultrasound flow meter. Baker went on to become the head of the technical team. Their success attracted other talented engineers like Jack Reed, who developed the first rotor mechanical duplex scanner, where both 2D imaging and pulse Doppler can be performed, although not both at the same time. Gene Strandness, a cardiovascular surgeon, took on many of the clinical studies to evaluate the performance and benefits of the new duplex scanner. By the mid-1970s, Baker felt that the technology was ready for commercialization and actively sought an industrial partner. The university negotiated a technology transfer agreement with Advanced Technology Laboratories, a small engineering company with only a few dozen employees in Bellevue, Washington. The know-how gained from Baker's team allowed ATL engineers to significantly redesign and improve the mechanical ultrasound scanner and make a manufacturable product. Ed Parker, then the director of engineering, and two technicians developed the world's first real-time digital scan converter. It replaced the expensive, bulky, and slow analog scan converters found in conventional systems of the day. It also allowed ATL's ultrasound scanner to display real-time images on standard NTSC video monitors and record them on videotape. The ATL Mark III system was successful in many different clinical applications because it was inexpensive and made high-resolution grayscale images of the heart, the liver and kidneys, the carotid artery, and many other parts of the body. As ATL grew and evolved over the next 20 years, it changed corporate ownership a couple of times, but it always focused on diagnostic ultrasound imaging. After the early success of the Mark III, ATL was purchased by Squibb Corporation, a pharmaceutical company that wanted to expand into the medical device industry. Eight years later, Squibb decided that the medical device business was a bit too challenging for their taste, so they spun off ATL and Space Labs, a patient monitoring company, together as Westmark International. Five years later, ATL and Space Labs separated, and ATL Ultrasound became a publicly traded company. In 1998, ATL was acquired by Royal Philips, the Dutch electronics giant. With the subsequent acquisition of HP Ultrasound, Philips has grown into one of the top ultrasound equipment providers in the world, with ultrasound sales generating over $1.5 billion in revenue annually. By the mid-1980s, ATL was spread out over 14 different locations across Bellevue and Redmond, creating a logistical nightmare. So in 1985, Squibb purchased the Bothell campus and built Building A to consolidate ATL into one location. All Philips ultrasound systems are still built in Building A. In the early 1990s, ATL acquired the pre-existing Building C, previously owned by LDEC Corporation. After the Philips acquisition, Building B was constructed to house marketing, legal, and executive functions and to provide a cafeteria and a large multi-purpose room. Building D was constructed in 2001 specifically for ultrasound engineering research and development. The vacated space in Building A was later occupied by other Philips businesses, for example, the Sonicare oral health care business and the HeartStream automatic external defibrillator business. 
I believe the real legacy of Bob Rushmer, Don Baker, and all those early ultrasound pioneers at the University of Washington is the network of ultrasound companies that were created in the subsequent decades and are still being created today. I tried to draw a rough family tree of those companies based on my limited knowledge, but I know it's incomplete. Most of these companies have founders or key technical contributors who were either UW bioengineering alumni or were previous employees at ATL. They went on to start new ventures and create exciting new products that will continue to improve the lives of millions of people around the world. It's been my pleasure and my honor to work with many of these brilliant innovators over the course of my long career at ATL and Philips Ultrasound.